Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have two bills before the committee. Uh, Delegate Mike McDermott on House Bill 395, uh, which would allow and permit uh, school guardians and a creation of that in Maryland. And let's just briefly uh, uh, summarizing that. You've heard a lot of people come in and support. What you've heard is I support HB 395. What you haven't heard is, is probably why. You know, we know the only thing that truly, if you're going to narrow down school violence and you want to deal with anything in school violence, you have to confess that the only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun on the other side of the door is a good guy with a gun. We have not had any of our school uh, shootings stopped by anything other than a firearm. It might have been a firearm uh, injury inflicted by the bad guy himself on himself or a good guy shooting a bad guy, but a firearm has always been involved in ending any school shooting we've had in this country. Our latest ones are, are an example of that as well. What this does is it confesses that that's true. We also know that you can't harden a target and keep people out of a, out of a school. They did that in Connecticut. They had locked doors. They had uh, buzzed-in entry. They had done all the upgraded security measures that you would ask any Maryland school to do or that the governor would propose to do with his token $25 million that's in the operating budget. Spread across, that's about $200,000 for my county. And i got to tell you, that's not enough to harden up even one of our schools. So what is the real answer to this? Well, the concept is really not radical, nor is it unprecedented. I want to point out to you that 18 states right now in the United States have what amounts to a school guardian program. Alabama uh, has one which bans possession of weapons uh, uh, except for somebody who has uh, a weapon to keep somebody from the intent of doing bodily harm. California, that real uh, uh, conservative bastion of a, of a state, with the approval of the superintendent. Connecticut, there's another northeast state for you, with the approval of school officials. Hawaii has no specific law and allows it. Idaho with school trustees' approval. Iowa with authorization from the school board. Kentucky with school board approval. Massachusetts, now there's another great place, with approval of the school board or a principal. Mississippi with school board approval. Montana with school trustee permission. New Hampshire bans applies only to pupils, not adults. New Jersey with approval from the school's governing officer. New York with the school's approval. Oregon with the school's approval. Rhode Island with a state concealed weapons permit. Texas with the school's permission. Utah with the approval of the responsible school administrator. And Wyoming as long as it's not concealed. Now I don't know about you, I'd like to go to the teacher's class in Wyoming uh, with a six gun packed on her side. But, but you know, that is allowed out west. But I gave you a bunch of northeast states that should turn your head and make you think, why are 18 states allowing our schools to defend themselves. And the bottom line is simply that. Arming persons at school should be left up to those people to make that decision that are in the schools. We're not offering any type of protection in Maryland right now other than fiscal security. And physical security at a school site, we know that it will be defeated. I think it was George Patton that said, uh, fixed fortifications are a monument to the stupidity of men. They can always be overcome. They always will be overcome. So what's on the other side of a Maryland school door that's locked, that has a buzzer, that has shatterproof glass? What's on the other side when the bad guy gets in? What about when he comes in through a door left open by some kid skipping class? What happens when he attacks one of those outbuilding classrooms that we all put up with on our campuses? What about then? What's on the other side of that door? And the answer is, in Maryland, nothing. Sure, I'd like to have school resource officers in every school. Wouldn't that be wonderful? Well, that would be one thing that you had. You'd have one gun on the other side of a door somewhere in a school populated by, say, a 1,000 kids in rural Maryland. One guy. And he's got a uniform on, so he's pretty well a target. What this bill does is it says, let's get real about what it means to protect our kids. And that means having people that are trained, that are certified, that are able to do that job. There's an amendment with this bill that requires the training component, that the MSAA and, and uh, the NCA, all these different organizations come out and say, well, you know, it doesn't have training. Well, the training is in there. It's an amendment. But, you know, the bottom line is we wanted to try and leave it up to the individual schools because this is about giving options. It's about creating options for the school bodies that you uh, are up here representing. And I can tell you, do you remember the scene in Private Ryan when they're, they've decided they're going to stay and they're going to help defend the town? And, the, and the, uh, uh, the captain says, bring all the ordnance in here. Let's see what we've got. And they bring every grenade and everything they've got possible to defend 
that little town, they bring it on, they lay it on a table, and they size it up, because those are their options. That's what they have to defend that town. And then they figured out how to use those pieces. Can you imagine them taking half of those ordnance that were brought in and saying, oh, we don't need the mines, oh, we don't need the machine guns, we don't need any of that, we'll be okay with what we've got. Nobody cuts their options down in combat. Nobody eliminates options from a table when you're trying to make a valid decision. And yet our school boards and our school systems, they seem to rail against this idea of having the option of actually having people on the other side of a doorway that are trained principally armed, able to defend not only themselves, but our children. Why is that such a foreign concept? When 18 states in this country allow it, and Maryland says, well, I don't know about that. Well, then what's the answer? You know, the answer in Worcester County for school resource officers is $1.6 million. And now our commissioners are going, wow, how are we supposed to pay for that? Well, you know, the reality is we can't afford it. Now, we've got people that are in the metropolitan areas and the urban environments. They've got schools that have metal detectors and armed security that they're either paying for or cops that they're paying for, SROs or SRDs. They've got them in those schools. And I get those looks like, what do you mean you need, you need people with guns on the other side of the door? What do you mean arming somebody that's working for the school? I don't understand that concept. Well, how could you? How could you understand a rural school that's 30 minutes away by law enforcement response time? How could you understand a principal in a school like that? who doesn't have an SRO, he doesn't have metal detectors, he doesn't even have locked doors. All he's got is himself and teachers. And God help him if anything happens at his school district. God help him because you know what happened up there in Connecticut is teachers got in front of bullets and that's all they could do is become a human shield. Well, i got to tell you, that is inexcusable. That is not an option. Is that the only option that Maryland offers our teachers and our kids is human shields? It's an outrage. And it's an outrage to think that somehow a police officer who goes to school for six months to learn how to be a cop, who only spends 80 hours at the firing range learning how to master a weapon, that somehow you can't take somebody with a master's degree who has a desire to learn, take them to the range, and teach them how to do the same thing. You all know that logically that just does not make any sense. This bill allows that to happen. It is not a budget burden. It is an amplifier of opportunity. It gives superintendents across this state and every jurisdiction the opportunity to have something that right now they do not have and they cannot provide an answer for, and that is a good guy with a gun on the other side of that door. I'll conclude with this. They say, well, a third of the teachers in the country believe in this, but two-thirds of them really don't. I wonder how the question was asked. I wonder if the question was said, well, do you want teachers to have guns? Or was it said... Would you like to have training? Would you like to have people that volunteered for this program? How would you like to be a Virginia Tech like my son was, running for your life, when there is nobody on the other side of that door with a firearm because they're not allowed? Because it's a, it's a gun-free zone. And there is no answer for this guy with ten rounds, no matter how many magazine capacity you want to build into it, no matter what guns you want to restrict. There is nothing on the other side of that door that stops a madman except somebody that rises up to the occasion that is armed and suitably able to handle it. That's what makes a difference. And we play games up here. They actually send in information to the chairman and say, well, the answer is we need to pay for the governor's educational compound. As if spending money on studying a problem is going to make it go away. You all are intelligent human beings. There is nothing that will be a game saver or a game changer or a methodology maker for us except making sure that there is a posture on the other side of that door to eliminate a viable threat. Nothing else does it. You know it in your heart. It's hard to make, it's hard to, as Delegate Schmiegel likes to say, it's hard to get the yes. But you know what? We've all got kids in there. We all need to be defending them. The second bill that I have before you is something that does the same thing. And it seems ridiculous that I would have to bring this up. And that's a House Bill uh, 397, which would allow simply to let police officers who are off-duty and certified in this state to have their firearm with them when they're on school property. Now you would think, well, why? You mean cops can't do that now? No, they can't. They're prohibited by law unless they're on official police business on their own school property. That bill simply says, you know what? 
having a cop in here when he's off duty is probably a good thing. And the fact that I would have the Teachers Association even, even compellingly wonder why we ought to do that is a disgrace. And I ask you to challenge them on every front and say, look, we're going to trust cops. Let's trust our cops. Let's trust them when they're off duty to be in there too. Because God help us if one's in there off duty and he can't have his gun at a school resource event and something happens and he's unable to respond. That is a ridiculous thing that we have in this state. We need to open up that, that uh, restraint and allow our cops to have that kind of access. I thank you for listening. I thank you for your patience today. And I certainly thank you for your support of these bills.